Hello YouTubers, welcome to my messy shop. If your workbench does not look like this, you are probably not having a good time. So I've been picking away at this engine. I've been cutting the crankcase. And I'm kind of getting a nice little shape going on. It's going to be opened up really nice. So the crankshaft go in here and I want to leave this open on the ends and these will be inspection covers so there will be a plate that goes over this. Up here what's going on, this is going to be my water cooling. So, my plan is to pour aluminum around this and make it a two inch square block that will surround this, hold it all together with a stainless cylinder sleeve. My goal this weekend is to make a camshaft. So, I have some 3 8 dowel. And I think I have some bearings. I had some brass stock hanging out. And so I cut and squared these up. And they'll be very similar to these pillow blocks. I'll just make them like it'll be a pillow block bearing all in one. All right, folks, another day in the shop. I got the camshaft sketched out here. Made the bearing. There's an oil line, so these bearings will have forced lubrication as well. So I drew this out on paper and What's really strange is when you draw something on paper and then you try to do it in real life, it doesn't always work. And uh, this is a prime example of that. So I drew the location of these, drilled my holes, and mounted this. But I soon discovered that we're really crowding this bearing for one thing. Another thing I forgot about was now my bearing cap is buried under this rod. So, you know, if I wanted to tighten it, it would be, I almost have to remove the camshaft to do that, to do anything with this bearing. So, hopefully, once this bearing is set, there should be no reason to take it apart. It should be pretty permanent for 100,000 miles or so. Now the other problem I'm having is the location of the cam relative to the crank. I was originally going to do a timing chain, but there is, for one thing, I can't find a 2 to 1 sprocket ratio of sprockets that will work on this shaft. Um, the smallest sprocket they make is really big. And so the primary, the bigger the primary gear gets, the bigger this cam gear has to get. And there just simply is not enough space. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, make a gear, go with timing gears. And I have had pretty good luck making gears, especially aluminum ones. They're relatively easy to make if you have the right tools. One of those tools that we need is a set of gear cutters. I happen to have one set. These are for a 16 diametrical pitch tooth. That is the size of a tooth. And I can do any 16 pitch gear with this set of cutters. And I got this set because half the gears on my lathe are 16 pitch. And so if one of those gears happens to break or sheds a tooth, I can easily make another one. I have one on a mandrel right now. This mandrel goes in my mill. 
And that's what allows me to cut the tooth. The reason they do a set of eight to cut one size tooth is that these gear, these cutters represent the diameter of the gear you're cutting. So we start, I happen to have the smallest gear you can make on the mandrel right now. And that goes up to, I believe, 13 tooth. And then as the diameter gets bigger, the profile of the tooth changes. So we have to go to a, another cutter for a slightly changed profile. And we go through the ranges. The bigger the gear is, the different cutter is what we need. The last one is 135 teeth to infinity. And infinity represents a gear rack, like in a rack and pinion. So I have this mistake from years ago. It's been in my scrap pile. But I made a mandrel for it, and it's pretty cool. Well, I, th I guess it's more of a bushing. It's a pressure bushing. But anyways, it's going to go on the camshaft like so. Obviously, I have to cut it. The gear I need is much smaller than this, but I can recycle this pretty easy, and it already has the pressure bushing that I need to mount it. And so this is basically ready to go. I can put it in my lathe. We'll turn the outside diameter, yada, yada. And then we'll put it in my mill, and we're going to cut it with one of these cutters. This will be the primary gear. This is uh, melted aluminum poured into a beer can. It's what I do with the extra aluminum that's in my, my crucible. After I pour a mold, I'll just pour the excess into a beer can. And it makes a nice convenient piece of stock I can put in my lathe and make shit later so here's another very important tool we need and it's the machinist handbook mine is obviously duct taped together my book happens to be pretty old it's uh it was printed in 1916 and I enjoy reading it it's really fun to read they actually have whale oil listed as a lubricant. Um, they recommend milk as a cutting fluid for copper. It's pretty cool. But there is literally everything you need to know about metal is in this book. Just flipping from the back, we have pipes and fittings, flow of water, flow of air. We have alloys. Dynamos and motors, electric motor drive, coloring metals, etching, soldering and brazing, autogenous welding, thermite welding, iron casting, heat treatment of steel, we got reamers, milling cutters, taps, screw thread systems, files, Broaching, punches and dies, grindstones, grinding. You would not believe how much information there is about grinding. Very good reading. So to make my gears, I need to get a layout. I need to find center to center. And it has to be at a two to one ratio, my two gears. So there's a lot of math involved. Uh, but this book breaks down that math real easy. They have charts. And my gears that I'm looking for happen to be in these charts. So once I got my camshaft in here, it's much easier to find in real time what this center to center is. 
Now, this center to center is not perfect for a gear, and I will have to move these bearings. They are located in the wrong place, but that's okay. I didn't like all this crowding going on here anyway, so I'm going to move this bearing back just a little bit, and this shaft is going to go up about a quarter inch and that's okay I still have plenty of room for my lifters so in making gears I'm really concerned with three numbers the pitch diameter that is what tells us where the gears meet on paper it's the point halfway up the tooth and so when I'm drawing these, I do the pitch diameter first. That's where the point where the diameters actually touch each other. And then obviously the tooth goes above and beyond that diameter, and it also goes below that diameter. So those points are the outside diameter and the root diameter. And that tells me how tall the tooth is. These numbers all came from this book in the charts. They already have it listed. Makes it super easy. So I'm going to go with a 26 tooth primary gear. And the outside diameter will be 1.75. And the cam gear will be a 52 teeth. That's exactly double the 26 tooth. And its outside diameter will be 3.375. That is what I'm going to turn on the lathe. This gear is going to go in my lathe. I'm going to make it thinner, probably half that. I think I'm going to just make it about 3 eighths wide. And the diameter is going to get turned down to this outside diameter right here. Now in a perfect world, the root diameter would be this number, right? But you need a little bit of space. So the book has a number with that space included. And they call it the whole depth of cut. And that tells you where you set your cutter to get that relief that you need. As I said, these numbers are paper numbers. But then in reality, we actually need a little bit of space here it is, once again, the MacGyver 2000. I'm all set up for gear cutting. So, on my mill, I have my 52 tooth cutter. It's in the three jaw chuck. It's on a mandrel. One end of my camshaft is on my tail stock. There's a little divot there, and I put the, the uh, dead center into it. And at the other end, it goes into what is called my indexer. Uh, this indexer is a 20 to 1 ratio worm drive. It's a right angle worm drive. So on this end, it goes into the end of the shaft in the worm drive. And it's hard to see, but I have a dog. There's a lathe dog on there. 
and that's clamped onto the shaft. There's a little flat spot on the shaft and that lathe dog clamps on it and that's what turns the shaft. On this end of my indexer, I have my 52 tooth gear pattern and it's just a piece of plywood and I carefully notched out all the notches and this is a knife so this knife comes up and goes down into that tooth that's how I count my teeth and with this being a 20 to 1 ratio what happens is I count the way the math works out I count 20 teeth the lines on this pattern help me to, they're in five tooth increments and it helps me to count. So I just go 5, 10, 15, 20. And voila, that's how that works. Um, there's a break on here. I made this break. And it's got a bunch of rubber bands attached to this break and that's what holds it down. And when I lift the knife, it lifts the break like so and allows me to rotate it and then when I let off the brake comes on and it keeps any backlash from tipping the shaft although this worm drive is really tight there's hardly no backlash at all maybe a thousandth or so but I just you know the brake is just a good verification that it's not moving And over here you can see, hopefully you can see that, there's a tooth. I'm just over halfway done cutting the, that gear. Um, it's a long process. It takes probably about an hour to cut this gear. I've been cutting on it for about 40 minutes or so. I had to take a break and make this little explanation video. So that's what's going on right now. I like to use tranny fluid for cutting fluid on aluminum. It works really well. Anyways, this thing is cutting pretty good. Now this shaft is long and skinny and I'm getting a little bit of chatter. But the chatter goes away as soon as I put my hand on the shaft. And it cuts just fine. I'm getting a really nice looking gear out of that. Uh, knock on wood. I don't want to speak too soon. I'm really good at screwing parts up and making them two or three times. One timing set. I'm glad I went with gears instead of a chain. I like the gears better. It's tighter, cleaner. I got a pretty good fit going on here. There's no noise. Now my mesh could have been a little tighter, not tighter, uh, actually I meant looser. And what I mean by that is I should have cut this a little bit deeper because what happens is the thickness of the tooth, if the thickness is too wide, they won't mesh together very far. Um, I've got a good mesh, but... It, could have been just maybe another ten thousandths deeper cut. The key is to cut both sets of gears exactly the same. So at least when I cut my primary gear, um, I didn't go as deep as I should have. And I did the same with the cam gear. So they're both cut the same, not deep enough. <laughs> But it's going to work just fine. I'd like to eventually replace this aluminum with a steel gear or actually stainless. Uh, I'd like both of these to be stainless really. Um, or make this brass and this one stainless. Something like that. So anyways, it's working for now. It's going to do its job. So I have this piece of cast iron, and this is going to be my cam lobes and the two thrust bearings that I need for the camshaft. So I cut one thrust bearing. I didn't center bore it yet, but uh, the, you know it'll get a center bore. I'm just going to take the other thrust bearing off this end, and whatever's left is what I'll make my cam lobes out of. 
I will make sure to draw a line down the side of this and that's where the set screws will go and that also tells me how far to do my offset in the four jaw chuck. My offset will be 3 sixteenths. So I guess you could say it'll have a total of 3 eighths stroke, but obviously only half of that is being used as a cam. So the idea is to have the rocker move an eighth of an inch. So I'm going 3 sixteenths and that gives me a little bit of leeway. All right, folks, here's an update on this engine. I've got the lifters installed. I've got the cam lobes installed. I apologize for the inconsistencies in my videos. I'm not the best video creator. It's not really my priority. When I start making stuff, you know, I get so focused, it's hard for me to stop and pick up a camera. Here's a better view of what's going on. You can see the cam lobes. Now my cam lobes are round at the moment and I probably will grind them into a triangular shape and get it to look more like an actual cam lobe. But for now I'm just still sketching this together. I've got my cam thrust bearings there on this center bearing. So my camshaft has three bearings. And the thrust bearings are on each side of this center bearing. So I have the cam lobes attached with a set screw at the moment. Uh, once I locate their exact position, I will put that cam on the mill and cut a little flat spot on the, the camshaft for the set screw. So my lifters, these are brass. It was a brass bolt. I uh, machined it round, put a dimple in there. And on this end, I machined that flat and I put a dimple on there. And then my lifter guides, they are a stainless bolt. It's a half inch bolt. And I machined a hole down through the center. Put a little countersink in it. And the idea of these lifter guides is that I can, if I turn this, it, this frame is threaded. This is going to come up and I can adjust the dwell of the valve. In other words, adjust how long it rides on the cam. And then it's got a locking nut so I can lock it in place once I get the adjust the height adjusted. And lifters are designed to spin. So the cam lobe actually rides on one side of the base of the lifter. That's why there's a dimple in it, and it makes the lifter spin. The spinning acts like a bearing, like a roller bearing, and it reduces the resistance. I have learned in the past from making other engines, if I make the lifter ride flat on the cam lobe, it actually acts like a brake and adds a lot of resistance in the system. And so by making the lifter roll, it acts like its own roller bearing and greatly reduces the resistance. So I'm pretty stoked about this engine. It's coming out pretty cool. Well, I guess that's about it. Adios.